Right now on the screen you can see our first task. And here is the solution for this exercise. We have that b equals 1 over 3. Then from the equation a plus b equals 1 over 3, we have that a equals 0. Then from the next one we have from b minus c equals 1 over 3, we have that c also equals to 0. So in the end we have that our final result is 0. 1 over 3, 0, which is the answer D. Now on the screen you can see our next exercise. And here is the solution. 128 equals 2 to the power of 7 and 1 over 128 equals 2 to the power of minus 7. So the answer is 7, but we need to choose all the answers that are not correct. So the answer for this task is a, B, C, D, F, and G. Now you can see the next task. So the solution. Our binary number equals minus 89.25 in decimals because we know that there is 4 bits after the point. And also on the screen, here is the calculations, how we get this answer. The next one. As we know that there is three bits after the binary point, we have that our binary number in decimals equals 0 0.875. Here is part 3. On the screen you can see the calculations for the sum. First we normalized second number and then make an exponent the same to some of them. Then we added my thesis together and see that our result is already normalized. So then we find our double check result and we see that the answer is 50, but we need to write it in the same format. So the answer is 011001010110. The next one exercise. On the screen you can see detailed how we transform 7 to the required binary number. The next part. And here is the solution. To transform decimal to binary coded decimal, we split our number to different decimals and convert each one to the binary. So 846 in binary coded decimals equals to 1000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 0110. The next task. And the solution. To convert binary code decimal to access three codes, we summarize three in binary to each decimal. So you can see the answer on the screen. The next part. The receipt message associated with the polynomials where the position of 1s in binary equal the power of x. To check if the receipt message is correct or not, we should divide t of x 
to the generation polynomial and if remainder equals zero, the received message is correct. But if it's not, the received message is wrong. So in our example, we have that remainder equals x. So the received message is wrong. The next task. And here is the solution. Firstly, we convert hexadecimal to binary, and you can see the result on the screen. Then we write the polynomial associated with the message and multiply it by the degree of generating polynomial, which in our case equals to 4. Then we divide our result to the generating polynomial and summarize the remaining polynomial r of x to m prime of x to find the received message. And after this, we convert it to the binary number and write the answer. The sixth part. To find the Hamming distance, firstly, we need to convert our hexadecimals to the binary numbers and compute how much bits are different. In our example is 2, so the Hamming distance of C2 and F2 is 2. Now you can see the next task. And the solution. In this exercise, we use the Hamming bits to find the transmit message. We put them on the places equals to the power of 2. So in our binary number, we have h1, h2, h4, and h8. Then we need to compute them. For the h1, we sum up by model of 2 h1 with the bits which are goes 1 bit after each one. For the h2, we sum up by model of 2 h2 with the next 1 bit and after we skip 2 bits and do the same. For h4, we sum up by model of 2 h4 with 3 next bits and then skip 4 and do the same. And for the h8, we sum up by model of 2 h8 with 7 next bits and skip 8 and do the same. So we have that each one Hamming bit equals to zero. So you can see on the screen our final result. Here is the first task of the next part. For the solution, if in the bottom right corner you can see the rules of Boolean algebra. So we apply them to our exercise and all equations and the final answer you can see now on the screen. The next task. Here we also use the rules of Boolean algebra to simplify the function and applying them in the end we have that the result is f equals z negative the last part solution for this exercise to find the function we'll use mean terms in Carnot map when we put ones to our map, we need to combine them by the maximum possible number, which should be the power of 2. So for this exercise, you can see the answer right on the screen. And the last one exercise. The graph which implements the expression of our task, you can see right on the screen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.